I now request a budding woman talent, a student of uh, Ryan International School, sixth standard student, Janabi Roy, to come on stage and kindly deliver a short speech. Good morning, respected monks, honorable speakers, and SML guests. Today, I, Jan B. Roy, a sixth standard student of Rand International School, Kandvili, feel privileged to have this golden opportunity to share some views of Swami Vivekananda on our women. <laughs> Swami Vivekananda, a patriarch saint of modern India, sums up the national problems of our country in two words the women and the people. In India, there are two great evils, says he, trampling on the women and grinding the poor through caste restrictions. I'll tell you a story. Do you know, in Malabar, the women lead in everything. Exceptional cleanliness is apparent everywhere and there is a great impetus to learning. When Swamiji was in that region, he met many women who could speak good Sanskrit, while in the rest of India, only a few women can speak it. Mastery elevates and servitude debases. Malabar has never been conquered by the Portuguese or Muslims. He is the hero, proclaims Swamiji, who with one hand wipes her tears and with the other shows the path of deliverance. Such should be an ideal human being. Swamiji narrates an interesting anecdote. I heard in Japan that it was the belief of the Japanese girls that their dolls would be animated if they will love with all their heart. The Japanese girl never breaks her doll. Swamiji firmly believed that India will awaken again if anyone could love with all his heart the people of the country. On the power of love, Swamiji quotes, I have experienced even in my insignificant life that good motives, sincerity and infinite love can conquer the whole world. One single soul possessed of all these virtues can destroy the dark designs of millions of hypocrites and brutes. Regarding upliftment of Indian women, Swamiji states, women should be put in a position to solve their own problems in their own way. No one can or ought to do this for them. And our Indian women are as capable of doing it than any in the world. Vedas are sacred books. Never make distinction between men and women. In the court of King Janaka, Yagnavalkya was examined and questioned by Vachaknavi, the maiden orator of Brahmavadini. Referring to the great epics, Swamiji says, that the race that produced Sita had a reverence for the woman that is unmatched on the earth. He believed that all over the globe, the general effort of the woman is to express love, tenderness, and uprightness. Of course, says Swamiji, women have many and grave problems, but none that are not to be solved by that magic word, education. But how to define education? Swamiji defines education as the development of faculty, not an accumulation of words, training of individuals to will rightly and efficiently. Then only will India get great fearless women like Sangha Mitra, Leela, Ahalya Bai and Leela Bai, women fit to be the mother of heroes because they are pure and selfless. Swamiji looked upon religion as the innermost core of education. He solemnly says, a teacher should enable a student to develop in her own line of least resistance. According to Swamiji, one and only duty of a human soul is to seek to realize the permanent amidst the evanescent. To conclude, I quote Swami Vivekananda's message to the women of this country. Believe in India and the Indian faith. Be strong and hopeful and unashamed. And remember, with something to take, we have immeasurable more to give than any people in the world. Thank you.